In our last lecture, we saw how we can run our application using Web Application Factory. This is otherwise called as bootstrapping your application. So basically, you have bootstrapped your application into a custom Web Application Factory so that you can execute the code and see how it works. Well, during our last execution, we saw that we got an 401 unauthorized exception. And this is happening because every single time while we run our GraphQL application and while we try to execute it, you know that you need to authorize your application. So for example, if you try to access this endpoint with get product by ID and if you execute it, you're going to get an unauthorized exception of 401. This is happening because we need to pass the login or the authentication operation before we start the operation. We have already discussed about that in our earlier sections. So if you try to pass the username as KK and the password as 123456 and if you try to execute it you're going to get an token and you can use this token to be passed in the authorize of uh, this particular bearer and then pass the token authorize it and now if you try to perform the same get product bear id if you try to execute it right now you will see that you're going to get the response back with 200 so this is happening because we have authorized our application using the token. So that is what is called as the authorization that we need to do within our application to get the endpoint back. So just a recap like how we did before. And now we will see how we can do the exact same thing using the web application factory as well. So basically we need to call one more API, which is the authenticate API to perform this operation and see how it can be done. So we need to pass the payload as the username and password and this is a post operation not the get operation that we need to do so once we have everything in place we could be able to achieve the exact same thing using the web application factory as well and we'll see how this can be achieved much much easily so in order to do that i'm going to start writing the code over here for the authorization as well but before that we need to pass the uh, data which is nothing but the payload that we are going to be passing in so I'm going to pass two things over here. The first one is the uh, username, which is going to be uh, KK. And then I also need to pass the password, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, these things we have already discussed while we were trying to do the authentication operation in the rest sharp demo writer over here. Remember, this is the one we tried to authorize uh, by passing in the uh, body over here uh, in the login model we also tried to pass using the anonymous method over here and then we perform the post operation and once we get the response we try to just parse the token from the response and then we pass it as the token to the authorization header for the get operation and then we get the response back these are the something that we have already discussed before and we're going to see the exact same thing but just with the web application factory and see how we can achieve that. So if you wanted to recollect more like how we did this, please watch the other sections of our course. We have already discussed about that quite a lot. Well, as that said, I'm gonna start doing the exact same thing. We already have a data and then I'm gonna perform the post operation, post request for uh, authentication. Yeah, there we go, authorization. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to first do this. I'm going to pass a var uh, JSON uh, is equal to uh, JSON serializer. And then I'm going to do a serialize of the data that we have got. So basically, I need to serialize this particular data that I'm going to be passing in as a request to the content that I'm trying to do. I'm also going to create something called as content where I'm going to create new string content and over here i'm going to pass that particular json and then i'm going to do an encoding of utf8 and i'm going to pass the content as application slash json so the reason why i'm doing all this thing is because you know that every time while we try to pass in the request body over here this particular body is going to be of content type application json and it is going to be passed in the header as you can see over here right so that is exactly what i'm trying to do in the code as well so i'm going to get this data uh, as a json uh, and then i'm going to parse it 
as a content and this particular content is the one which I'm going to pass in in the post operation which I'm going to be doing over here. So what is the post operation? Uh, var auth response or whatever. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to say await client dot post async. So this is the post operation which I was talking about. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to pass an API slash authenticate slash login. So this is going to be this particular endpoint that I'm talking about. And then in the post operation, I need to pass the content. So you can see that there is an overloaded method for the HTTP content. That's what I'm going to do, this particular content. So I'm going to pass the content over here. So now that we have a post response, post operation with the content as well, and we will get an authorization response back. And you know that every single time when we get the response, it is going to have an response as a token and then it's going to have a big response uh, with the token value. I need to get just this particular token value. And if you remember in our last lectures of the course, we try to parse in this particular uh, token value from the content uh, over here using the J object. I'm going to do the exact same thing as well. So I'm going to just copy this entire thing and I'm going to paste it over here. But guess what? This particular auth response uh, is basically going to be something that we need to get the content like how we did over here. So I'm going to say a weight of the auth response dot content dot read us async, read string us async. That's going to give us the uh, value which I'm looking for. So now you get this particular token. So you should get the token out from this particular post operation. So hope you are with me following along the content. So all we have did is we pass the content into the serialized object to serialize the value as from the JSON value, which I can pass it as a content over here. And this is the value which I need to pass it as a post operation for this particular API. And now we get the response back, but I need to parse the response in such a way that I just need to get the token value alone, not the entire thing, because the response content is going to have the these kind of message. I don't want to get this message of success or something like that. I just need to get the token value alone. That's why I'm parsing this particular content using the J object dot parse. And now I have the token. I need to parse it in the header of the get operation, which I'm doing over here. That is very important. And the way I can do it is I need to pass the client. This is the HTTP client that we are using at the moment. And I need to pass what is called as default request headers dot. That is something called as authorization. And in this authorization, I can now pass new authentication header value. And over here, I need to pass bearer because you remember we need to pass something called as bearer and then the key. So I'm going to pass bearer over here. And the value of the key is going to be nothing but the token. Basically, this token, we need to just pass it like two string just to make sure that it accepts a particular parameter. And that's all. That's the authentication header value. And now I can see that the authentication is just going to happen. I know it's a bit of confusing with the application factory and you may be thinking that it is quite a lot of operation just to prove the point that the application factory is performing the operation. I'm doing all this stuff over here. So hopefully we got the response um, from the authentication and we're going to see if that works. So now if you try to run the same code over here, you should see that it's a success message and you will notice that we get the response back with a product one of keyboard and all those stuff. So this is working fine. Right, so there is an authentication happening and there is no 401 exception like unauthenticated or unauthorized exception. So if I change the product by two and let me even stop this GraphQL application, sorry. And if I try to run this app this time, you see that it just runs for product two. And note the time over here, it just takes 684 milliseconds. And it is now spawning the entire application, running it in memory, authenticating it and also performing the get operation for me over here. So you can run this any number of time and you can get the same response back instantly because it's all running in memory for you. So that is what is the authentication mechanism that you can do from your web application factory as well, pretty much like how we did before.
So now that you have got the idea of how the web application factory works and do everything for you. In our next lecture, we will see how we can use this web application factory within our REST Sharp client to perform these operations for you like how we did before.